hello 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 welcome back to the channel today we will start a new series of video on how to build an AI product so I build many AI products on the channel and I still have the same question every time how can we build a complete AI product mixing AI generated code and our own code how to deploy it which technology to use which stack to use which kind of product to build and in this video or series of video I'll be going through how to build an AI product from start to finish so um, in this first part I'll just be exploring what an AI product is. I'll be showing you different examples of AI product with different architecture and different way of building them and different tools that you can use to build them. And then in the next series of video, the next part of this series, we will go in depth through everything we need to know from each component, how to build this product, deploy it, and maybe you see the usage and much more. So. Let's first start by going through uh, our notes here. I just prepare a simple Excalibur um, where I just wrote down some stuff so, about this first video. So we have here, what is an AI software? What's an AI product? So that's the first thing we need to answer. Uh, the second thing is what you need to know before building an AI software, because uh, you may have a lot of things that are um, hidden when you start building that you discover when you go in depth in this product and in this part, first part i will just show you what is involved building when when you start building an AI product and what you need to consider before starting and then now um, at the end i will show you how to build an AI power software um, with the tools that you need the programming language that you need the ai tools that you can combine to actually build something um, really fast. So let's get started. So the first question we have here is what is an AI product? We have many, 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 many products. So here I just chose five of them with five different architecture, four different architecture actually, because Po and Sintra kind of have the same architecture. And I will be showing you this product and giving you a bit of the underlying architecture and um, how you can actually build them. So the first question that we needed to answer were, what is an AI product? As you see all these products here, you have ChatGPT, Post, Intra, Tradix, Asian, Angela, all these products are actually AI product. And the only thing they have in common is that they are powered by an AI technology. So it can be a large language model, it can be a deep learning algorithm, it can be an ML process or an ML pipeline, it can be anything that's related to AI. Um, and in most of the cases these days, when you hear a product, it means the product integrate a large language model. So let me show you here um, what, what this means. So here I see when you have all these products, the thing that they have in common is that they integrate an AI technology and they still have a lot of software in there. So you cannot build at this stage, you can build an AI product without zero, with zero knowledge in software. You need a lot more software and um, software engineering skills to build an AI product than AI skills, um, unless you're building a platform, of course, but yeah. And this, a lot of software means a lot of front end and a lot of back end. So let me just quickly explain what the front end and the back end is. So as you can see in this image here, some of, most of the time you have some way of interacting with the UI, uh, with the product that you've built will show different interface for different products in the upcoming part of the video. But you have some kind of way. So it can be chat GPT interface where you just type a text and get a response. And it can be just your phone, a mobile app like Siri or Google Gemini Live or the chat GPT mobile app. It can be anything, but this is actually your way to interact with the product. This part is AI less. So I, I don't know how to say that. You have zero AI in this part of the code. You just have interface interactions and um, you know, user experience and everything that user will be seeing. And at the second part is that when you click and you interact with these AI apps, there are signals that are sent to a server. So these signals can be click, it can be text that you type, like in ChatGPT when you type, help me with this exercise, it get this text and it send it to a server, okay? This server is responsible of contacting the LLM or connecting your your app to the LLM to the latest language model, 
getting the answer from this layer strongest model um, make some processing on this data and sending it back to you so as you can see as you will see in the upcoming part we'll be presenting each tool you will see that sometime when you type an instruction something's happening in the behind the scene of your product and this behind the scene is actually the most important part of an ai product it's where you actually integrate your ai okay so with that said let's go through each of these tools and uh, underlying architecture so i started here with ChatGPT, and um, as you can see ChatGPT has a front end okay the front end is uh, let me show you quickly show you let me quickly show you the front end of ChatGPT. The, the front end of ChatGPT is this, you have this little button, you can just, you know, change the color, the text size, the button size, it's actually where your creativity lives, where you actually make some changes on how the product will look and feel like on, uh, at the users, on the user side. But when you go in inspect here and you go in the network, you will see that every time you type something here, something is happening here. So if you say, hey, can you help? me so you see that a lot of things are happening here okay a lot of um, requests are going through the server here it's saying hey can you help and you are seeing this is to generate auto completion so like auto complete things that ChatGPT will give you as completions and you will see in response here that it say hey can you tell me what interesting can you suggest so this is actually happening in the back end so when you start typing here this is the way you have, okay, you can see it here, for example. This is the interface that you have. You create it for the user to interact with your app. And when the user types something here, so if you clear everything here, when I type this, you'll see that you start a uh, conversation with the AI and the AI will be answering. And this conversation is sending it, our response back to us and we are displaying it. So as I mentioned, as I mentioned here, we have the front end and you have this front end sending a request to the back end. Okay, it's like a restaurant. If you, when you come to a restaurant, you pass your command, the command, the waiter take your command and go with it in the kitchen. This is actually the back end of your tool. Prepare it and give you the end result, which is a plate. You don't really know what's happening behind the scene. You don't know what they are using to cook um, or what they're actually giving you. you. Just have a request and you will, and you and you uh, are waiting for a response. And what's happening behind the scene, uh, same as in the restaurant here, is that. The back end is actually collecting to an LLM. And in all the examples that we have, the only people that need to build the LLMs are the platform. So it means you as the product builder or the product owner of this platform, you don't need to build an LLM. You will use an existing LLM. It can be open source. It can be OpenAI, Entropy, Google, whatever. Normally your AI product should integrate one of these systems because building an LLM is actually quite expensive, at least six million, at least six million to have a good LLM. So you should be worried about your back end, your front end, and uh, the LLM is actually the, you know, if we get the restaurant um, example again, normally the chef would just be buying, you know, all the ingredients that he needs for, for the food. So you should be also using all these tools to build your product. So when a user types something, your backend just arrange and orchestrate this tool to do something specific and send back a response. And this is what we'll be doing during this series of video. So first, the first architecture I presented here, we'll be building it in the next part of the video and progressively adding features to enhance and add a bit more complexity to our AI app. So this kind of architecture is quite simple, okay? You have an interface, which is pretty simple, like this one, and you have a backend which receives your request. Maybe check if you are logged in or this kind of things and then connect to the LLM, get the response and send it back to you. So this kind of app are really simple to build. But let's go a bit uh, deeper into the complexity and goes through Sintra or Po. So this system, Sintra is actually supposed to be a kind of AI employee platform, but it's basically a lot of, a lot of chats uh app or chat persona okay and po is actually a platform where you can choose between a lot of llms so and you will see it here when you come to po you have so many llms here so 
this section of our app that we're connecting to one LLM is actually split into a different LLM. And your backend is actually supposed to choose between one of these LLM based on what the user wants to see or want to have. This is the next level of complexity. It's still the same, but the only thing changing here is that you need many LLMs and you need a way to connect to all these LLMs. So this is the next step of an AI product. So the next step of complexity in an AI product. So if you just build a chat GPT like interface, it's quite simple. If you build a poll like interface, you need to connect to different systems. And here you need to adapt to all of this SDK. And I will show you how to do it well in the uh, later in this video. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is the second part and we'll be building something quite similar from the first part. So the third part is actually building an LLM that's connected to an external system. So Tradix agent, as you can see here, I didn't go through this, but you can, you can go through the website and see what they're offering. Um, Tradix agent is a platform where you can type something and generate the complete trades and post it on your um, Twitter account. As you can see here, the complexity grow a bit because you need to integrate into an external system. Your AI now needs to interact with an external system. So it's still the same principle, the same concept. So you have here an interface, which is your UI. And if you expect, same, go to the network tab of your browser. And if you say something like uh, best, best LLM of 2024. So if you click on create engaging X thread, you will see that there is something that's being sent to the backend. And this something return a response. And you see this response is being generated in real time, which is what you're seeing here. This scanning the web, article discovered, um, extracting key insight. And there's a lot of work happening in the backend. And what's different here from the other system that we presented is that we have an AI agent. So it's a team of AI working together to help build or give you a response. So in this case, you have some AI going through internet, searching for a relevant article, combining them, making them trade related, generating the image that will go with it. So you have much, much more work than just a simple system connecting to multiple LLMs. And the last part of this kind of system, integrating AI agents that is connected to external tools. It can be to perform some actions there or just to fetch some data from these sources. So this is the next step of our AI, where we where we'll be just integrating tools and integrating external platforms, which, are, which is a bit more complex than just choosing between multiple LLMs, at least more complex than what we showed before, but still manageable. Now, the last part, I think we have a response here. You can see it fetched the logo of each of these platform. The crate is clean, you know, and all these um, are actually possible because of AI agents that are able to generate this, put the right image and put a summary with the right image. So this is incredible. Um, by the way, I will be putting the link in the description so we can try it out. But this um, is the next step in the AI, uh, in, in, the, in the step of building AI platform. So now the latest step is quite frustrating because you don't have the same architecture as what we have seen so far. So if you zoom in here, hopefully you're, you were reading since the beginning, the last platform is quite different. So you have a front end, but this front end has no interaction. This front end is just, uh, what can I say? Just a website, right? Um, and here, the way the user interact with your tool is via phone. So this is quite interesting. You don't have a real front end where the user will interact with your tool. You don't even need a front end here. So this is a level of complexity above what we, what we presented before, because you need a phone system here. Let me just scroll something that supposedly will be our phone system, something like this. I don't know if that, this looks like a phone. And this phone system will be connecting to this provider here. This provider get the phone, um, send it back to the backend directly. So we don't have any relation between the front end and the backend. Um, I don't have a real analogy. What could it be? It's like delegating something, right? Um, you go to a platform um, like um, Alibaba, you say, okay, I want to buy this and Alibaba will just delegate it to someone else to do it. And the whole process of doing it in the back yard until shipping you the product, 
Alibaba normally is not involved anymore. So it's actually the same thing here. You come to the front end maybe to see the app, create an account. And then when you have your phone number and you connected your data and everything, this part here is triggered. So when someone called, it's really good to the platforms. The platform calls the back end, and this, the complexity grew a bit more also because you need an orchestration layer. An orchestration layer is quite simple. It's just a way to make all the system works together in a proper way. So you need this system to integrate many different tools because to be able to make the AI talk, listen at the same time and interrupt the, itself when you start talking, you need different kind of system. In this system, you have the language, language model itself, which is built as an AI agent because it needs tools, it needs access to um, the company um, CRM, it needs access to, um, it needs memory, it needs many, many things. So this is an AI agent as well first, but com uh, uh, added to that, you need a speech to text process, processing module that will actually get the voice of the user, transform it into text send this text to the LLM. So the LLM receives the test, give you back a response. You need to text to speech level to actually read what they use, that the LLM just said out loud to the user. So this is, a, I would say the end level of uh, this AI app we'll be building. And um, um, I will be showing you the process of building each of these system one by one in the upcoming part of the series. I think the first part is quite good. Um, and then in the, Next part, I will just show you here what is the front end, um, what, how do we build the front end, um, how do we build the back end, and how do we connect the LLM. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this first part of the video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.